how do I feel when I actually just accept this part about myself? I feel really calm. I feel really lit up. I feel really grounded. Yeah. Or it makes my heart beat a little bit faster. Or it feels exciting. Um, but when I showed up very serious, they would say, oh my God, you're such a great leader. And then when I was more playful and expressive, they said, no one's going to take you seriously, Cheryl, if you're like that. No one's going to take you seriously. Guess what? I'm both things and it's okay. Right. So when we're not accepting ourselves, we might also find there's people around us that are not accepting us too. And that sometimes is a mirror for like, how can we accept ourselves at a deeper level? Why is it we have these people around us that are rejecting part of ourselves? Are we rejecting part of ourselves? And I feel really welcome with them. And that's how you feel when you've accepted yourself. You, you are around people that you're like, they get me. They get me because I get me. And they accept me because I accept me. Yeah. <laughs> just about to take a drink sorry guys hello welcome <laughs> radical self-acceptance is the wormhole to finding love what we're we talking about we are talking about how the fastest path to finding love is accepting yourself deeply so for those of you that haven't met me before i'm cheryl muir i'm a relationship expert i help you to find love especially if you've gone through years of heartbreak and patterns of painful cycles in love shall we get into it let's crack on so self-acceptance what is self-acceptance really and what isn't self-acceptance so i think self-acceptance in personal development is taught in a very fluffy way and i don't think that's bad necessarily i don't think it's necessarily a bad thing um but it's like oh get your journal like journal out some affirmations affirmations are powerful don't get me wrong but it seems like it's very surface level it seems like accept the things about yourself that are palatable and acceptable and it's it's more than that it's self-acceptance is accepting the parts of you that have been um this might feel really sensitive for some of you that feel really the parts of you that have been rejected by others shamed by others ridiculed humiliated by others the parts that you feel are here's what it sounds like oh, I can't do that, it's too much, or it's not enough, or what will people think if I do that? Or is it too weird? What are people gonna think of me? Is that okay? Should I be doing that? Am I allowed to do that? They're the types of things that we need to accept about ourselves. It also involves our sexuality. Many of you will know, I discovered I was bi about 18 months, two years ago. Surprise, um, it's actually Manchester Pride um, in England uh, this weekend and it was always the August bank holiday um, Last yeah, the last weekend in August was the bank holiday that Manchester Pride fell upon and I always used to go there in my 20s when I was living down in Manchester and I'd go as like the token straight friend to like support my friends and show my solidarity and it turns out I was bi the whole time and I didn't know how do you not know you're bi is another conversation for another time but the point is um, I've reached a really deep uh, level of self-acceptance when I was working through that I was remember journaling on it and going well what does this mean about me and does this mean this and does this mean I'm that and does this mean I've got to do this and what will people think and how does it fit in and that's what self-acceptance what the process is like there's a lot of head fuckery and a lot of chatter and a lot of things that feel confusing and all those little like chattery moments are the times that we need to just quieten down get really still and just ask ourselves how do I feel when I actually just accept this part about myself. I feel really calm. I feel really lit up. I feel really grounded. Yeah. Or it makes my heart beat a little bit faster or it feels exciting. You know, when we accept that part of us, um, really beautiful things can happen. Um, and here's the thing. If we're not accepting ourselves, we're not going to be happy in our relationships because we're not really going to be showing up as who we are. Right. Does that, does that make sense? Is that, is that logical? Um, if we're not being honest about who we are, we're not going to be showing up as who we are. And we're not going to be honest about what we need, what we desire. Um, have you ever done that thing in relationships where you turn up the volume on certain qualities around certain people and then kind of turn down the volume or mute other qualities because they're not palatable to that person? I certainly did years ago when I found friends who loved me being like really happy and playful and goofy, which is part of me. But when I was um, very boundaried and really ambitious, they didn't like that. That was too aggressive for them. Uh, I had other friends, you know, friends in the industry who loved it when I showed up online being very, um, very stern and not smiling, <laughs> which is also a part of me too, but I'm a bit of a smiler. Um, but when I showed up very serious, 
they would say, oh my God, you're such a great leader. And then when I was more playful and expressive, they said, no one's gonna take you seriously, Cheryl, if you're like that, no one's gonna take you seriously. Guess what, I'm both things and it's okay, right? So when we're not accepting ourselves, we might also find there's people around us that are not accepting us too. And that sometimes is a mirror for like, how can we accept ourselves at a deeper level, right? Why is it we have these people around us that are rejecting part of ourselves? Are we rejecting part of ourselves? And how can we accept ourselves more? Here's a journaling prompt for you. I have no script, by the way, so none of this is planned. So I don't really know what the journaling prompt is going to come through exactly as. But what don't I want people to know about me? What don't I want people to know about me? And what am I afraid will happen if they know? What am I afraid will happen if they know? Journal on that. Yeah? Journal on that and figure out what it is that you really don't want people to know about you. Because that's part of it. Right? That part of you that you're like, oh God, I, I just, I'd be mortified if people knew that that was something that I found exciting. You know, for a long time, I really hid my um, preference for like the arts and for nerdy stuff and fan stuff and fandom stuff. I hid that for a long time. Like, oh, I can't do that. I'm a professional. But actually, um, connecting with beautiful directors and writers and people that talk about story and healing and the soul. Um, you might all know I have a series called Real Relationships where I interview people in the arts. It's been so healing for me and there's nothing I'd rather be doing. It's so fun for me. Connecting with cosplayers on Instagram, they're the most welcoming, generous people. And I feel really welcome with them. And that's how you feel when you've accepted yourself. You, you're you around people that you're like, they get me. They get me because I get me. And they accept me because I accept me. Yeah, does that make sense? What part of you are you repressing? We can't selectively accept ourselves we can't selectively love ourselves we can't say oh this is really good but not this piece over here that's not okay it's got to be all of it it's got to be all of it and you will find as i said at the start you will find that the things that people the, the, the aspects of you that you're trying to hide are probably things that have been um criticized and judged and shamed by other people and so you're, you're afraid you're afraid that someone might say that again might shame you again for being really nerdy or for being really passionate and really excited or um and by the way like who does that who does that who sees that someone's really excited about something and then goes oh that's stupid <laughs> like, that's awful that's awful to do that to a person i would never see someone being excited about something and, and like judge them for it it's crazy but people do and if that is something that maybe your family did, either directly or indirectly, then you have taken that on as thinking, oh, I can't be like that. I can't show that. Were you kind of the black sheep of the family, right? Did you feel like you were scapegoated? Did, did you feel like you didn't fit in? Did you feel like a bit of a sore thumb, as we'd say in England? Because that can be a very, very disturbing, unsettling experience when you had a family who all were in the family system and you said, I call bullshit on that, that doesn't feel good to me. I think this is dysfunctional, even if you don't have the phrasing at the time, you just know it doesn't feel right. And you wanna be empathetic and warm and loving and understanding, right? But they're not. And then instead of them being able to look at themselves and look at maybe where they have a little bit of, of, of work to do around maybe not judging other people, instead you get blamed, you get scapegoated, yeah? Anything that happens to us before the age of six years old, particularly, is going to be something that lodges into our subconscious and builds a picture of who we are, who we think we are. And we have to do an enormous amount of um, self-reflection work to, to be able to take all those parts of us and say, actually, I love that part about me. I love that part about me. I love that. I really hope that helped you. I'm going to sign off for now. I'm sending you so much love. And remember, accept yourself more. Love yourself more. Stop fighting yourself. There's nothing wrong with you. You're beautiful and lovable and worthy. I love you. Bye for now.